people those were just coming in the title or were we watching it the title is anger and justice and how do we as christians react to the whole idea of anger and justice so i'll actually get started now so before we go into the opening prayer the title is called anger and justice like i mentioned and it's about how we as christians react to anger and justice how god has told us to react because all these things they're not things that happening before injustices aren't things that happening before i mean there aren't things that haven't happened before all these things the world goes about in a cycle everything that happens is a cycle essentially so jesus and god they've already given us advice in how we as christians how we as followers of god followers of jesus should act and react to this and also about anger as well a lot of people are angry a lot of people are angry especially in regards to um what happened with the unfortunate killing of george floyd but in regards to so many other things as well in regards to so many other things as well the general injustices that are happening in the world in terms of poverty in regards to even the a gender gap the gender pay gap there's so many different things there's so many different things that happen around the world that all quantifies for injustice but yeah before we go into that let's do a quick prayer let's do a quick prayer Father Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, O oh Lord. We thank you for giving us the ability to come together as a family. Once again, Lord, as a level of family of people who love you, who serve you, and who just want to listen to what you have to say, Lord. Father, I pray as I speak, may it not be me that speaking, but you speak through me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, in all my inadequacies, fill them up in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I pray that whoever this message is for lord whoever needs to hear it may get to them regardless of however it gets to them regardless of what medium lord father pray that everyone listening they shall be blessed lord father we are praying for enlargement of coast in jesus name lord as we go into a topic called anger and justice father may you show us how you want us to really be 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 people who are just who are righteous and who showcase what and everything you want us to in the mighty name of jesus lord i give you all the praise and adoration father lord thank you for answering all our prayers for in jesus name we've prayed amen 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 so title anger and justice how do we as christians react what is our reaction to anger and justice so anger and justice they're two different things that a lot of people might not think they're linked but they're linked and i'll tell you why I'll tell you why. Anger and justice, there are two things that have been common, very common things throughout the course of time. Even if we look from the days of even the Tower, actually not even the Tower of Babel, let's even, if we look at the days from far, far beyond, even little, little aspects of anger. For example, even in the case of Noah, when people saw him building the ark, they were angry because they saw him building the ark because it didn't rain because it never rained before but they were angry why are they getting angry over that so anger is an emotion everyone has anger is an emotion everyone has and justice i know i don't need to give you so many different examples of justice and injustices but throughout the world there have been so many times where we've seen examples of justice being carried out we've also seen examples of injustice being carried out as well so we've seen a large spectrum of these things we've seen a large spectrum of things but the key thing in all of them the key thing in all of them is that they've happened throughout the throughout the history of time it's not something we can get away from and it's not something we will get away from as well even if it's something that we may not see happen to ourselves personally something that somebody you know would have seen happen either justice or injustice unfortunately so there are two things that they reoccur they reoccur throughout the whole world like i mentioned is a cycle from the holocaust in terms of injustice from the holocaust in terms of justice the civil rights movement when black individuals are finally given the the rights to be seen as equal individuals and there's so so many others there's so so many others and the thing about it is that they can be seen to be interlinked they can be seen to be interwoven as well see if i was talking to loads of people it would be easy because then you could just ask how are they interlinked how are they interwoven in what areas are they interlinked in what areas are they interwoven but it's just me and other people that are on the live but it's a bit harder to talk so if we're going to do that then how do we understand the linkage 
how are we going to understand the link between anger and justice how do we understand the link between anger and justice most times when people think of anger when they when they think of justice is usually jungle justice that comes to mind i don't know if people have heard of a term called jungle justice but it's the idea when civilians start to take justice into their own hands not civilians but anyone they take justice into their own hands and start killing people doing taking revenge basically it's also something we're going to talk about as well it's something god doesn't approve of it's something god doesn't necessarily want of us either but the thing about anger is that there's um there are different aspects of anger when people think of anger we always think of anger in the negative term or we always connote it with negativity however and i'm not disregarding the fact that anger has a high 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 chance of being regarded as negative but again it's an emotion and it's all emotions come from god god gives us all emotions for us to have is our decision how we use the emotion and sometimes anger can actually lead to positive things happening anger can lead to positive things happening and i know some of you might be thinking how is that possible so i'm gonna start making it real making it real easy so people can follow along and we're gonna go through our journey if anybody has any questions or anything they want to say they can just put it there and i have a read i'll, I'll share it i'll tell you my thoughts well, like I said, I like interaction, so all this Facebook Live stuff is a bit different. But God is still, God is still there. God is still sees us and sees us as we go into it. So anger, anger, anger. It is an emotion, like I mentioned before, and it's acknowledged so many times as an emotion in the Bible, but mainly as an emotion that brings about negative consequences. It says it so many places in the bible if you look at james 4 james 4 26 to 31 james 4 26 to 31 i'm just going to open up very quickly so there won't be a wastage of time james 4 26 was it james 4 26 to 31 no james 1 sorry james 1 19 20 my bad james 1 19 to 20 james 1 19 to 20 Okay. James 1 19 to 20. Now he says, I'm going to change the version. James 1 19 to 20 says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to become angry. Okay. So everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. And slow to become angry so this is what God is telling us it's not telling us that we shouldn't get angry or it's saying that anger is necessarily wrong but it's saying that it's something we should be slow to do and this is a recurring theme that occurs at different points in the Bible as well I'm going to give you some more verses which also back up that point as well anger should only be used as a last resort anger is something that should only be expressed when we feel that what we need to say isn't coming across and this comes in regards to injustice specifically which i'll go into later but is only used as a last resort is rarely rarely used anger should be something we have full control of and i think that's where a lot of people go wrong so like i mentioned before the bible and god doesn't say that being angry is necessarily wrong but is the consequences of that anger that actually wrong there are a lot of times where they have been people getting angry and that anger has actually changed things for the better you know let's look at martin luther king if he didn't get angry at the injustices which black people were going through at that time then there's so many things that wouldn't have happened um desegregation might have taken longer to happen there's so so many things not even just martin luther king there's so many great people in the world so many people who've had an impact on the world even jesus himself jesus got angry jesus got angry jesus showcased all those emotions even at the time when he over flipped the tables i'm gonna go to that verse later as well but i thought it was very important to say that anger is something that while it's seen as a last resort it's not something that god is saying that if he doesn't give you the right right things because anger can you know stir a fire in your belly sometimes it can motivate you to want to change the world to want to do things better than they've been done before than they've been done before the most important thing though is just how we use anger just how we use anger for anyone listening 
you may have been feeling angry about everything everything that you've seen um in the past few days in the past few weeks not just this even in regards to um the coronavirus stuff in regards to how anything's been handled even in your personal life if you've been feeling angry about anything how are you using that anger if you're just feeling angry and you're using it in negative negative ways then that is a waste it's a waste it's a waste thank you Hang Anna you said anger is an emotion yes it's okay to be angry but it's how we respond to that anger that's very important yeah exactly right our response to anger determines so so many things because sometimes you can say things even in anger you can say things that you can never take back as well and that's still again as a consequence of anger but on the other hand sometimes I know some people that are angry that when they're angry they work like me personally when when I'm angry when I'm angry it, it like it motivates me it motivates me so it's either I would work for ages or I'll just do something like different something productive for ages I don't know why it just makes me like way more productive so for me anger can sometimes be positive things are positive things but honestly sometimes it cannot be a positive thing as well sometimes when i get angry i get angry unfortunately which is not right and it's what is what we're talking about here as well in the word that god god has a higher standard of us so god isn't saying you shouldn't be angry but it's how you respond to that anger like hannah said it's how you act that's the most important so anger like i mentioned before how you react but it's also vital that that anger is followed by calm as well so after you had you know your moment of anger as a last resort like i mentioned you should be quick to calm down you should be quick to be able to find a solution okay i've been angry how am i going to use that anger after you've decided how you're going to use your anger calm down calm down calm should be the end result let's look at proverbs 29 verse 1 quickly proverbs 29 1 okay proverbs 29 1 So Proverbs 29 1, it says, Whoever remains stiff necked after many rebukes will be destroyed without remedy. Hmm, I think that's the wrong one. Sorry guys. Sorry guys, just got got a bit got a bit mixed up. Here we go. Proverbs 16.32. Apologies. Proverbs 16.32. Proverbs 16.32, it says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So I'll repeat it. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who is spirit than he who takes a city. I'm going to repeat that one more time just to make sure, because even, even me, it's getting me. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So it's basically saying he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and somebody who has um, control of his spirit is better than somebody who has control of a whole city. So again, it is important that we understand that anger comes from God, but we also have to be able to control our anger. Anger is one of the most powerful emotions there is, because it can either break or build that's the thing and a lot of times anger because it's so powerful a lot of times it breaks unfortunately and a lot of people they don't know about the aspect that it can build a lot of people don't know about the aspect of how anger can build as well which is something that that we'll talk about and one of the key ways it can build is in regards to injustice is in regards to injustice that's why i decided to focus on injustice today as well because there's so many there's so many facets of so many emotions that we even discuss that we even talk about emotions aren't as clear cut as we see things there's so many things that aren't as clear cut as we see them that's why we have the bible the bible helps us navigate our way sometimes it helps us you know cut through the muck cut through everything else that's happening it just, it just helps us have like clear clear path sometimes you know that's something i love about the bible something i love about the bible so like i mentioned patience is the most important thing for for everything god wants us to be patient to anger and even when we get angry he wants us to you know get calm again very very quickly so 
again I don't know it's for but for anyone who may have been feeling they've been feeling angry lately they've been feeling agitated because I know sometimes being stuck inside can also like make you get angry quite easily as well or just make you you know just get annoyed at little things just because you're, you're not allowed to go out it's just little things like that so for anybody who's like that God has called us to a higher level just because we're Christians God has called us to want to calm ourselves to want to take charge you know take charge of all these things and it's very very important as well because you know one of the visions of level up is to raise disciples of Jesus Christ disciples of Jesus Christ yeah disciple of Jesus Christ he also Christ representative as well and when people in the world react to things or the way people in the world react to things we as Christians we've been held to a higher level so sometimes how they react is not necessarily wrong but God has called us to a higher level what does a higher level mean it means we have to be able to see things differently so we have to either see things are more more so you have you can see more in the future and more behind as well so it's something from the John Maxwell conference and John Maxwell book we've been reading um as a as a level up so level up um leadership team and it was just great it talked about the idea to be able to see things far ahead and also see things beyond as well so if you can see things in all different directions which is how we've been called to as actually christians because we've been called to you know stand out from the world which is something i love to talk about we've been called to stand out from the world and this goes to every single aspect as well especially emotions and it's something that even a lot of christians fall like you see great pastors but they have anger problems because it's not something that they've mastered yet and it is hard because again it's an emotion as an emotion and it's something that we need to and we need to control god calls us to control it because again higher standard higher level god holds us at a higher level than other people so but even with all that said and done even god himself got angry there are so many times god got angry in the in the old testament story of sodom and gomorrah god wanted to destroy them straight away but god went to god went to abraham so god wanted to destroy them straight away god was angry straight away however god showed calm and then he had a little chat with abraham about it that he said i'm going to destroy them but abraham was like no god no god if you can find a few people that are faithful god said and this is god showing patience so the thing i like about god is that god usually gives an example of how he wants us to act and jesus as well even if you look at baptism baptism was meant for an example for us of how we should do things you know there's so so many things that god and jesus do that are all examples so back to my point so in the story of abra in the story of the destruction before the destruction of sodom and gomorrah abraham just went to god he said if you can find a few people da, da, da. and each time abraham kept reducing the number but to be honest if it was me if it was after the first time and abraham said he couldn't find them i would say mm, that means there's nobody who's worthy Boop. just destroy the whole place just destroy the whole place but god showed patience god showed patience and that's the key thing we need to show patience as well anger and patience need to go hand in hand anger patience and calm so the order for me I, I like to have orders so the order for me is patience first see how we're gonna go if there's no resolution anger but it has to be a quick anger and then it goes to calm use that anger use the fire you feel from the anger to do something productive to do something effective and don't just let it go to waste don't just let it go to waste and even Jesus himself got angry but if you look at 2nd Kings 17 18 quickly 2nd Kings 17 18 quickly because a lot of people and I think a lot of the time it's very important to to have you know biblical backing in what we say like the Berean Christians who you know went back looked in the Bible made sure that you know what was being said in the New Testament was actually the real deal we need to do that as well so it's not like I'm just making it up 2nd Kings 17 18 let's have a look 2nd Kings 17 18 Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. And why was God angry? Why was God angry? I'm going to tell you why. Because the people of the the people of Israel at that time they sinned so much. If you look at the preceding verses, even from um, from verse 14 or even earlier, verse 13, they stiffened their necks like the necks of their fathers. They made statues. They rejected God's 
covenant they became idolaters they started doing things basically and they started doing basically which god you know hated god didn't like they were practicing witchcrafts they were killing their sons and daughters they did evil they were selling themselves they were doing evil in the sight of the lord and that's something god hates god hates doing things that are evil god hates doing things that are evil god hates evil this links back to injustice god has called us to fight against evil as well god hasn't called us just to pray against evil praying against evil is very important but god has called us to fight against evil god like i mentioned this is a higher standard which a lot of people which a lot of people don't do people in the world they can fight against evil but they don't pray against evil so even then if they fight against evil they win the battle for a short time but it reoccurs again that's why so many things are a cycle that's why so many things are a cycle people can win one battle but they don't win the war because they don't have prayer in it they don't have prayer in it i was i'm watching um a tv interview where a man was talking about the cause of all these things that happen in the world he said that the root cause of it he thinks is sin and i agree i agree and the bible talks about all i've sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of jesus christ and for me that's basically it so all these things they can't be solved unless everyone and people start to go back to the root cause of it sin and going to jesus christ saying god I've, i humbly come before you forgive it um laying down all my sins till the whole world does that all these things won't be done and it'll just be a cycle just be a cycle so like i mentioned in order to get rid of injustices like i'm even jumping the gun here but it i think this is quite an important point in order to get rid of injustices we need to fight God has called us to fight against injustices, but not just fight. God has called us to pray against injustices as well. That's the best way to have it permanently done. I think fights, uh, not fights, in like physical fights, but I think standing up to things is great and it's fantastic. But sometimes it can only work for a short time. Sometimes it's only effective for, a, you know, a short period of time. Like, I'm going to use the example of everything that's happening now. It's great. It's fantastic. All this Black Lives Matter movement is, honestly, it's so wonderful about the thing is that it's not the first time things like this are happening you know all these things they've happened so many times and the pattern previously going off of what's happened previously i'm praying this time will be different but the pattern previously is that people will rise up there will be so much you know short short-lived this short-lived that and people will be really advocating but it dies down in a week or so but god hasn't called us to do that as christians and why yeah, because people go off their anger and then when the anger is gone they don't they don't fight for it they don't keep going they don't keep working they don't keep the memory of all these things and they just falter out why do they do this for me i think it's because people don't pray i think it's because people don't pray because when we pray god brings things to our members number one and god also works things out as we are praying as well so all these things are things we need to pray as as christians especially in justices especially in this day and age there's so so many things but i think justice is one that is very very important to pray against i think it's one that's very very important to pray against but yeah uh, that was just a little little sidetrack that was i think it was very important to say and it was laid on my mind to say but yeah moving on in regards to anger jesus also got angry as well and there's so many times jesus got angry but the key one let's look at matthew 21 12 to 13 i might go a bit before that but we'll see matthew 21 12 to 13 matthew 21 12 to 13 and this was when jesus cleansed the temple so i'll start from verse 12 then jesus went into the temple of god and drove out all who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold those and he said to them it is written my house shall be a called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves i'm just going to repeat i'm just going to repeat the, the the part from verse 12 just a short part from verse 12 jesus went to the temple of god to his father's house and drove out all those who sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changes and the seats of those who sold in droves so i'm just gonna a lot of the times like when we read stuff in the bible we actually don't deep how like the is significant so imagine imagine going to like like imagine going to the market I mean, that's probably the best best example imagine going to the market 
I, this is just in general. So imagine you're at the market and then you see somebody at the market, so like a fruit market, over throwing vegetables, over throwing this, over throwing that. And it was like, oh, this is happening because you're desecrating, you know, the place of my father. You're desecrating some place that's important to me. You know, like if you see that, you'll, you'll be thinking, oh, this guy, this guy's mad, you know, like this guy's doing something crazy. But the reason God did this, the reason Jesus did this was because it was unjust was unjust they were turning they were turning the house of god which is place of prayer into a den of thieves into a den of thieves that is not right that is not right that is not right and jesus saw this jesus saw this and he was angry jesus saw this and he was angry and he overturned the tables and which is what i was mentioning before sometimes anger can have positive positive consequences in this case jesus showing that anger by overturning the tables was a positive consequence but like i mentioned before as well anger sometimes also has a lot of negative emotions and consequences so it's very important for us to be able to control that anger very very quickly and this is something jesus did as well like i mentioned the bible is the perfect template because it gives you you know guidelines of how we should do things if you go to verse 14 it says then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them after this so imagine jesus just overthrew overthrew all this i'm sure it wouldn't have been straight away overthrew all this and then after people were coming to him he was still healing them he's calmed down because calm was calm occurred straight after so he used that anger you know to you know charge him up do what he needed to do which was fight against injustice after that calm he went back to what he was doing best and i'm sure he would have oh, actually, i don't know at that time so, so i'm not, not going to speak i'm not going to speak for the bible i'm not going to speak for for anything but if it was me after that if i had the power to heal me me i'll be healing people you know with extra power you know i've been charged up I've been charged up but that's something that is very important and when we understand how to control anger and how to use it to do great things i think that we shall see a lot of you know world changes a lot more world changes a lot more people that get things done a lot more people that do great and powerful things especially against injustices especially against injustices so in regards to anger anger can be a powerful tool when used correctly and that's the key phrase when used correctly the reason we see anger the way it is or the reason a lot of people see anger as negative is because a lot of the times it's used incorrectly and most times actually funny enough it's used incorrectly most times it's used incorrectly but when we can control our anger and then when we can turn it you know into something for good it can give us that charge that push we need in order to make a big change in order to make a big change so now we're going to go into justice a bit more and just the little link between anger and justice. So justice, like I mentioned before, is a recurring theme throughout the whole Bible. But God's version of justice is different to our version of justice sometimes. Like I mentioned before, the whole idea of jungle justice, where we sometimes can take things into our own hands, want to seek out revenge, want to do this, want to do that. God doesn't advise that. God has called us not to do that. God has called us, like I mentioned, to a higher level. To a higher level. This theme of a higher level is something I've been thinking about a lot, actually. A lot of people forget the fact that God has actually called us, you know, to do greater things than, than, than you know, all the prophets, all the people in the past. God has called us, you know, to a higher level. But a lot of people don't don't take charge of that higher level they they like to stay complacent where they are and it's something that has been charging me up lately this is a side word but something that's been charging me up and i think whoever listened to this it should charge you up as well god has called us to be a at a higher level god has called us to a higher you know standard and sometimes we may fall short of that standard but that's still that's fine but don't forget god has called you to do something higher god has called you to do something greater and if you're not working in that, I think it's time to start working in it. And it's time to, you know, start doing greater things. But yeah, back to what I was saying. I was talking about revenge. So in regards to justice, God wants true justice, not revenge. And we can see this in Matthew 5, 38 to 39. So if you open Matthew 5, 38 to 39 quickly. Matthew 5, 38 to 39. 
you have said it, you have heard it said, sorry, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you. Do not turn away. So I read up to verse 42, but the key parts were from verse 38 to 39. So Matthew 5, 38 to 39. And this is all about the whole idea of revenge. So before Jesus was saying, you have heard it said, it's been said before in the Old Testament that an eye for an eye, I can't remember what, what book it was. I can't actually can't remember what book it was. I was going to say Deuteronomy or Leviticus, but I actually can't remember. Um, yeah, so Jesus was saying in the Bible, or in the books of the Torah at that time, it been said, oh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So the, that was the whole idea for you of jungle justice. If somebody did something to you, you could do it back to them. I'm going to do you as you do me, essentially. So what Jesus is saying that, resist that resist you know that urge to do that because that's not true justice that's just you seeking momentary satisfaction by you know hurting somebody else but what does that do in the long run somebody is going to be more affected by you showing them kindness than you repaying evil with evil because what does repaying evil with evil do usually it just creates a cycle which is again something that is a big theme. Like I mentioned, all these things, all these injustices that happen is because it's a theme, it's a recurring theme. You know, when somebody sees injustice being carried out to them, even if they get to a higher level of authority, they all, a lot of the time they just end up doing injustices to somebody else because they'll be like, oh, I suffered this injustice in the past. So now I'm here, why don't I, there's nothing stopping me from doing this like a retribution for what happened to them in the past, you know? And that's not right, because like I mentioned, as Christians, God has called us to that higher standard. God has called us to be better. God has called us to be greater, and it's something we should never, ever forget. Something we should never, ever forget. And even me, myself, I'm charged by that statement. God has called us to do bigger and greater things. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But God is telling us to resist an evil person, and resist that statement as well. Like, if, if you look at so many influential people, Martin Luther King, he was angry, like I mentioned before, he was angry at injustice and the way black people were being treated. And this led to a resurgence of one of the greatest marches for for equality than the, that the world has ever seen. Martin Luther King, his name is something that's still mentioned till today. For somebody to have such a great impact, you know, one thing I'm really passionate about is is having people and being a person who who's able you know to impact the society i'm in the area i'm in to impact so so many things and people like that like martin luther king are a big a big example for me and like just just going through their life and going through how they did it especially even more so the fact that he loved god he was a christian in himself he was a pastor in himself and or somebody who works according to the statues and dictionary so like I mentioned, that's the whole idea of a higher standard which God has called us to. God has called us to do greater, bigger and better things. And we just need to have that. We just need to have that in our mind. Uh -huh. The best thing about this is that God has called us to act justly, to love tenderly and to walk humbly with him. And that's seen in Micah, Micah 6, 8. Micah 6, 8, yeah. Seen in Micah 6, 8. God called us to act justly. Like he's telling you, act justly. Act justly. This and like that verse, it starts with, this is what the Lord asks of you. He's asking of us, act justly. Walk humbly, we are God. Act justly. And the preceding, the preceding statement is actually love tenderly. Act justly and walk humbly with your God. So those are the three things. Those are the three things God, God, God asked of us. God asked of us. And a lot of people find, find it hard find it hard to do some people love tenderly yeah they can love tenderly that's fine love your neighbor as yourself it's not that's fine love god yes i love god that's great but when it comes to acting justly that's that's where they have a bit of a trouble with that's where they have a bit of trouble with and the funny thing is that if you don't act justly you can't fulfill fully the statement of loving your neighbor as yourself unless you're able to stand up against injustice are you loving your neighbor as yourself because if it was you 
if you had two of you and you are seeing yourself being treated unjustly but you would step in so why aren't you doing that for your fellow neighbor why aren't you doing that for your fellow friend god has called us to a higher standard people it's very very important that we also hold ourselves at that higher standard as well and even beyond that god calls us to use our desire for justice to bring about a change so it's not just one thing to say oh i want to you know i want to act justly we have to do it with the intention of bringing about a long-term change long-term change means doing something that would affect the way things are run that would affect how things are being done for the future um i'm lucky enough to be part of the african caribbean medical society at my um at my university and in regards to all these things that have been going on we've just been working behind the scenes trying to trying to um bring about you know um changes in regards to the medical school curriculum and in regards to how even representation of black people in the cases in you know in so many different things because a lot of a lot of medicine it was done in a way that because it's the, it was done in the olden days where the majority of the population especially in the uk they were all white so they were done with um, basically white people in mind so even little things like um asthma readings medications but uh, they were done with white people in mind or they were done with caucasian people in mind but however it's very important that when we have a you know a large a large range a large range of treatments that's catered to different people i'm uh, sorry this is a, a a short spiel but i'll go back to the i'll go back to the word so when you have um different medications that have been catered to different people it's called personalized medicine this means that people live for longer people have a higher rate of surviving and that's why you even saw it in the case in the in the news as well they've been saying that um black and african uh, black and my own minority people minority um, ethnic minority ethnicity sorry um they've had a higher chance of dying from covid19 why sometimes it's just because the treatment options for us are not catered to the treatment options for black and uh, minority uh, minority people are not catered to us they've been catered to a different you know different um people and sometimes just those little things you know, those little things so it's about the key point if i went on my little tangent it's about making a change it's about making a change and that's what god has called us to do as individuals and as christians and the significance i used an example not not in regards to um what's happening in the church not in regards to what's happening in like a spiritual um environment per se but god has called us to do this in the world as well god has called us to do things outside of church outside of just being and something i talk about a lot I, I like i think we've been called to a charge as christians not just to be church christians but to be people who represent god in the outside community who are leadership position in the outside community i was thinking about it if we had a christian prime minister if we had um christian actually i actually don't know if the prime minister is christian or not i'm going to retract that statement if we had um christians at levels of leadership you know it can lead to so many 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 different things even certain laws we see being passed might not even be passed because we have people in levels of leadership in levels of authority and again that's what god calls of us to do and it's something a lot of christians aren't doing that's the thing a lot of christians we are comfortable being church christians we are comfortable going to church i'm um, serving in the church which is a wonderful which is amazing and god has called us to do that but god has also called us to have an impact outside the world as well if we're saying we want to stand for injustice then i mean stand against injustice then we need to stand against injustice and that means putting ourselves out in the world making people know that we stand against injustice or making people know what we stand for and who we stand for as well so so um yeah just add to that if we look at romans 12 19 romans 12 19 romans 12 19 i told you guys i'll go back to the word romans 12 19 romans 12 19 beloved do not avenge yourselves do not avenge yourselves which, which goes back to the whole idea of revenge but rather give place to wrath for it is written vengeance is mine and i'll repay vengeance is the lord's not ours says the lord so that means, again, vengeance is God's, revenge is God's, it's not ours, so we shouldn't take revenge. But God has called us, instead of taking revenge, to make a change, make a change. Use whatever feelings you may be feeling to make a change, to want to do things differently for the next generation, to want to make things better for everyone. If we look at Isaiah 117, how can we act justly? 
it tells us how we can love tenderly how we can do all these things which god is acting of us which asking of us sorry isaiah 117 isaiah 117 sorry isaiah 117 great so isaiah 117 isaiah 117 i'm gonna start reading from the last part of um, verse 16 so it says cease to do evil learn to do good seek justice seek justice after that it says rebuke the oppressor so it's not just about seeking justice so seeking justice look for justice then we need to after we seek justice rebuke the oppressor as well so you see somebody who is um who is showing injustice to somebody else you need to rebuke them because what they're doing is wrong rebuke the oppressor and defend the fatherless plead for the widow come now and let us reason together says the lord reason together so that means working together as well working together with the oppressor whilst rebuking them because how, how are things going to get better how are things going to get better and that's all or the whole idea of justice that's the whole idea of justice god has called us to defend people who are defenseless to plead for the widows you know people who can't who can't necessarily always fight for themselves and most importantly to rebuke the oppressor most importantly to rebuke the oppressor and even just to show even just to show that you know what i'm saying i'm not making up if we go i'm not just saying it for myself if you go to psalms 37 27 to 39 psalms 37 we're not going to read all of it but psalms 37 <laughs> psalms 37 so it says depart from evil and do good and dwell furthermore for the lord loves justice god loves justice so god is a just god and he loves justice so that means he loves us when we go you know go looking for justice being just people as well and he does not forsake his saints they are preserved forever but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever so the key part from that for me was the bit where it says the lord loves justice in verse 28 and as a result he will not forsake his saints so for anyone who may be feeling there, I'm going through an unjust time. God won't forsake you. God is the God that doesn't forsake us. He doesn't let us go. He doesn't let us down. So God loves you. And justice will be done. And God's justice will be done. True justice. Not our not our sometimes warped version of just justice. This is very important. And even goes God even goes further to say that those who act just are blessed if you look at psalms 106 verse 3 psalms 106 verse 3 i love psalms psalms proverbs they have such good you know such good bible verses could you such strong bible verses psalms 106 verse 3 so it says blessed are those who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times i'm even going to read a different version for you all so you get it Blessed are those, I'm reading from the NIV version now, I'm reading from the New King James before. Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. So acting justly, doing it to others, and also seeking out justice. Like I said, this is, it seems like a lot of work, but God has called us to a higher standard. Not just in church, outside in the world. So that means even, even in our dealings, if you're a businessman, act justly in your business you know don't be ripping people off act justly if you are a businessman or businesswoman sorry act you know justly in everything you do if you if you are somebody who leads people act justly if you do appraisals act justly if you're a teacher and you're marking students work act justly if you know it, it's it spans beyond so many different things a lot of the times i think we as individuals we like to i'm um, over not not spiritualized because spiritualized is wrong but we we sometimes we read something in the bible 
and we keep it to the Bible, you know. We read something and we'll be like, oh yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm still going to apply this when I go to church next week. But what about the other days of the week when you can kind of apply it in your daily life, you know. What about the other days of the week when you can actually do it. And I think that's something a lot of us do. Even sometimes me, myself included. And I think it's something we need to get better at. As Christians, it's something we need to get better at as a body. God has called us not to be church Christians, but to be world Christians. You know, people who who do everything God did. God wasn't was rarely in the temple. You know, Jesus, sorry, was rarely in the temple. Jesus was out there in the world. That was his ministry. His ministry was the world, you know, was to bring people back. And that's what God has called us. For some of us, God may not have called us to be pastors, but God has called us to have an impact in the world. God has called us to have an impact in the world. And acting justly and acting and showing justice, seeking out justice and fighting against injustice is one of the best ways we can do that. One of the best ways we can do that. And we know that God is a God of justice. God promotes us, promotes, sorry, promotes justice. And he also wants us to gain justice as well. And like I mentioned, this means doing things the right way, getting the right type of justice, not vengeance, not um, self-seeking, not looking to do you as you did me. It's just very important. God wants us to seek justice, especially justice for those who can't fight for themselves. And this goes far beyond just a little thing as well. A lot of times when we talk about justice, we talk about justice for ourselves. But we need to also extend that justice and help people who don't have a voice find justice. Help people who can't necessarily speak for themselves find justice. Why? Because it doesn't do anything to us. But it's because that's what God has asked of us is a charge we have as Christians, is a charge we need to do as Christians. And not enough Christians are doing that. If everybody who said they were Christian, a true believing Christian, did that, and they started actively looking out for um, people who don't have a voice, the voiceless, being the voice of the voiceless, looking for justice for people who can't fight for themselves, imagine how different the world would be. Imagine how different the world would be. And that is the true justice God has called us to. If we look at a few verses quickly before we end, if we look at Zechariah 7 verse 9, Zechariah 7 verse 9. Thank you, God. There we go. Zechariah 7 verse 9. Thus says the Lord of hosts, execute true justice, show mercy and compassion, everyone for his brother. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless if you look at what we talked about before it talked about standing up and defending the fatherless and standing up for the widow um carrying on do not oppress the widow or the fatherless the alien or the poor or the poor sorry let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother execute true justice show mercy and compassion that's what god has asked of us true justice not our what version of justice true justice if you look at deuteronomy 16 verse 20 these verses are just to bring everything together that I've been saying and to show the whole fact there are various themes which I've talked about today but the key things is the fact that God has a higher standard of us higher standard of how we use our anger how we use our emotions and how we use that emotion of anger to fight against injustice or what God wants of us to do against injustice as Christians as well who we need to be showing our love against injustice for and fighting for so that they gain justice as well so just sorry just finishing off Sephora. um deuteronomy 16 deuteronomy 16 20 deuteronomy 16 20 so deuteronomy 16 20 says you shall follow what is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And God was talking to the Israelites at that time. He was saying that they should act justly. And if they didn't act justly, they wouldn't be able to live and inherit the land which God has given them. Obviously, now it's different. God hasn't necessarily said, oh, if you don't act justly, you won't get this, you won't get that. But God has called us. Again, God has called us to a higher level. God doesn't need to hold anything over our heads for us to do what we need to do. You know, you know? we know what is right. We know what is right then we should do it we know that god has held us to a higher level we don't need anybody to say anything we should just be able to do it and just to finish off we're going to read proverbs 29 verse 7 and i want us to finish on this proverbs 29 verse 7 
The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge. I'm going to read from some uh, from another version as well, just to, you know to recap it. The righteous care about justice for the poor. That's NIV. Before I read NKJV, the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no concern. So, are you a righteous person or a wicked person? Even people who call themselves Christians can be wicked sometimes. Even we as Christians, we can do some very wicked things. Or, or so-called Christians, let me not say we as Christians, even so-called Christians can do very wicked things sometimes, you know. And that's why I'm just going to end it on. God has called us to a high standard. God has called us to care for those who can't fight for themselves. And God has called us to do great things and bring about a change to our fight for injustice in the world. I'm just going to finish it there. Just a nice closing prayer. Father Lord, we thank you once again for this wonderful day. We thank you for giving us the ability to come together, Lord. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. Father oh Lord, we give you all the praise and adoration. Lord, should I be blessed you. Lord, we thank you for this word. We pray that whoever is meant for, we pray that they shall be blessed, Lord. We pray that it shall touch them. It shall reach them, Lord. In whatever medium, however they need to hear it, we pray they shall hear it in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we give you all the praise and adoration. For in Jesus' name we pray. Oh, lastly, Lord, help us to fight against injustice, to stand up for injustice wherever we may see it, wherever we may find it, Lord. Help us to want to bring to, to, the, to an end all the cycles of injustice, Lord. Help us to want to be that gap, that stop gap, that stops repeating, that stops the repeating of so many false cycles, that stops the repeating of so many injustices in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because you're raising up to be leaders. We thank you because you're raising up to be us to be world changers, Lord. Father, we give you all the praise and adoration. Give us the strength to be able to do this and to be able to do this in great and wonderful ways. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and adoration. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great evening, great day, great afternoon, great weekend, great everything. God bless you. Love you all. May God increase your. Have a nice day.